three. Hello, we're here with uh, Lorena Gonzalez, who is running for Seattle mayor. Would you like to go ahead with your one minute introduction? Sure. Thank you so much, Chair Gomez, for giving me an opportunity to be here with all of you this evening. Uh, for those of you who haven't had an opportunity to meet me, I'm Lorena Gonzalez. I am a, a candidate to be your next mayor for the city of Seattle. I am uh, first and foremost a first generation American. My parents were immigrants from Mexico and uh, I'm also a first time mom. And uh, I was a civil rights attorney for 10 years before being elected to the city council in 2015. Uh, I have served uh, this city as a public servant for six years now. And I am uh, excited about the opportunity to serve as your next mayor. Uh, I'm running to be Seattle's next mayor because I believe that the issues facing the city of Seattle are uh, so critically important to solve with clear leadership. I'm looking forward to tackling issues like homelessness, climate change, and uh, poverty and income inequality. Look forward to answering your questions. Great, thank you. So now we'll move into our four prepared questions and uh, I will place them uh, into the chat as we go along. The responses to these are two minutes apiece, and uh, the order I have is Barbara, Andy, Sherry, and then Paula. So Barbara, I'm going to place the first one into the chat and you can unmute yourself. She might be frozen again. I think she, oh. Yeah, she is. I'll go ahead and read that one. Uh, it says, will you commit to spending all of the emergency funds appropriated by the council and awarded by the federal government? Please explain your reasoning. Uh, yes. Um, you know, as a, as a sitting council member, I understand and appreciate the critical role that our city's legislative body serves, which is to appropriate dollars to policy priorities. And it's the mayor's responsibility to implement um, and, uh, and to spend those limited resources on the policy priorities that have been identified. Um, I think this is really important to unlocking us from the political gridlock and to actually making progress on some of the issues that, um, that are the most pressing for the city, specifically around the area of homelessness uh, and, uh, and also making sure that we are um, continuing to invest in an equitable economic recovery as we look to build back better, uh, not going back to the, to, to the status quo. But in order to do that, the next mayor must act with urgency uh, and must uh, act in collaboration with our, our city council to really um, get us uh, back to a place where we are constantly moving forward. Great. Thank you. Uh, now I'll go into the second question and I'll place that into the chat and would our next person go ahead and ask that. Um, I believe that's Andy. Yeah, thanks, Nicole. Mm -hmm. um, what is your immediate actionable plan for providing sufficient resources to end homelessness in our region? Well, thanks um, for that question. Um, you know, for me, it is about uh, making sure that uh, our largest, most profitable corporations are paying their fair share into a system that requires adequate resources uh, to, uh, to meet the scale of the need in our community. Um, and so I am proud to have been a and continue to be a champion of progressive revenue. Uh, I was proud to be one of the of the uh, co-sponsors to the Jumpstart Seattle payroll tax proposal that was brought forward by my good colleague, Councilmember Mosqueda. And I think there's an opportunity for us to build on those kinds of progressive revenue uh, forms that, again, focus on the wealthiest and the largest corporations in our city to once and for all solve for the need around housing affordability and uh, services needed by those individuals who, um, who we have not done enough to help. And so I'm looking forward to, um, to leading in that space and to doing that together with members in community and with members of the city council, labor and small business communities to, 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 to really fashion those kinds of initiatives to, um, to again, address this issue once and for all. Great, thank you. Uh, question number three, um, Sherry. What is your understanding of the separation of powers and what will be your strategy for working with the other city officials? <clears throat> 
Um, it's a little bit of a schoolhouse rocks question. I love it. Um, so, so separation of powers is really, um, really important. At the city of Seattle, we have a, a strong mayor and some may argue also a strong council uh, uh, form of government. So to me, um, you know, I'm really proud to be endorsed by nearly half of the current sitting um, city council. I think in order to really, again, get us unlocked from this political gridlock that we've been experiencing at the city, it's important for the next mayor to respect and understand the role that the city council plays in lifting up the needs of their constituents, which we will share, uh, and also in the role that the council plays to um, appropriate dollars to fund really high uh, policy priorities that are hopefully going to be shared between the next mayor and, and the city council and members of the community. So to me, it's really important that the next mayor fundamentally understand that, that they respect the, uh, the work of other elected officials in this city, and that we collectively work together to define a shared vision for our city that is focused again on progress and on, uh, on solving the most urgent issues facing our working families across the city. Great, thank you. And question four, Paula. Would you support extending the eviction moratorium after September 30th in Seattle and why or why not? Yeah, and I was really disheartened to, to read about the Supreme Court opinion that just came out um, last week, uh, you know, sort of as a footnote, this is why we should care about judges and who serves on our Supreme Court. Uh, and and, I, and I, um, I strongly supported the eviction moratoriums, both at the state level and at the city level. And I continue to believe that, that uh, they should be, uh, those moratoriums should be extended. We know for a fact that there is not enough rental assistance to meet the nearly 14 months uh, average of back rent that, it, that is owed by many workers who still, in some cases, are not back at work. So we need both the eviction moratorium and significant influx of additional rental assistance to those who, who need it the most and who are still struggling to get back to work in order to to, to have that housing stability. If we do not do this, we are going to see a massive increase of people experiencing housing instability and homelessness throughout our city. And that is the last thing we need as a region and as a city and as a state. So I'm, I'm ready to work with uh, the governor, with uh, whoever the next executive is gonna be and with my colleagues on the city council to identify those resources. Great, thank you. Uh, so now we'll move into our follow-up questions and the responses to these are one minute apiece and we'll start with Andy. Hi, thank you. Um, I wanted to follow up on your answer um, of how your immediate actionable plan to provide sufficient resources to end homelessness. Um, you mentioned that you were gonna have corporations pay their fair share. Uh, what are some specific ways that you will get the corporations to do this? Well, I think, you know, anytime we were going to propose a new revenue, it does require um, a lot of um, coalition building and it does require us to really uh, focus um, our efforts on building that campaign. There are two things that come immediately to mind. Of course, the state passed the capital gains tax. Uh, we're dealing with a legal challenge to that and a potential initiative ballot on that. But if that is successful, there is an opportunity for cities like Seattle to build on top of that capital gains tax and create additional progressive revenue right here in the city of Seattle. The second um, uh, opportunity is uh, the wealth tax, uh, the income tax that the city council passed several years ago that I voted in favor of. We have an opportunity to go back to the table um, pull together a coalition to see if we can advance um, that, that policy proposal again, but also have a tax credit for low-income families to reduce the burden on them. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Paula and then Mackenzie. Thank you, Chair Gomez. Uh, Crosscut just published a piece discussing police officers' um, resistance to complying with the new vaccine mandate. And I'm curious as to your reaction to that and how you would approach our public safety officials and getting vaccinated in Seattle. Yeah, um, yeah, I support the vaccine mandates. Um, I think that if you are going to be a public employee, it's incumbent on you to comply with 
with the with the mandate and it's my expectation that they do of course we have as management responsibilities to to negotiate with our public um, uh, employee unions and um, and we will do that but I think for those employees who uh, don't have a legitimate medical reason or other reason to not be vaccinated um, have to accept the reality that they will no longer have employment within the police department Thank you. Great. Um, Mackenzie. Hello. Um, I was looking for uh, an opportunity for you to potentially um, separate yourself from your candidate a little bit. Um, if you wanted to maybe give an example of a policy that he is interested in implementing if he becomes mayor or um, yeah, just something along those lines is maybe something that you uh, don't agree with and you would do differently. a way to differentiate yourself. Yeah, um, I guess I think I'm uh, different than my opponent in a lot of ways. Um, but, uh, you know, I think, I think for, um, you, you know, let's just sort of take the approach uh, on um, Charter Amendment 29. Um, I have, from the beginning, um, opposed Charter Amendment 29, unlike my, my opponent. Because it, as last week's court ruling described, I believed it was unconstitutional. And I also believed that Charter Amendment 29 was just fundamentally and deeply flawed because it didn't have a funding mechanism for its lofty policy goals. And because of that, it would have required the next mayor to engage in austerity budgeting, to slash services uh, that are vital to other uh, that are vital to people in our city. And I don't think that that um, charter amendment would have um, risen to the occasion to actually meet the scale of the need of, um, of, of services and housing truly needed to address the crisis around homelessness. So um, that that is one area of clear distinction. Great, thank you. Um, I have a follow-up or a question um, that is actually asked by one of our members, and they were wondering, uh, what investments can we make to support our youth and their mental health? Um, so I think um, what uh, I've been really proud to work on as a, as a council member that I would, I would be excited to continue to support um, as mayor are our investments in the family education preschool and promise levy, which I was one of the prime sponsors of shaping that package. And um, you know, one of the things that I'm most proud of in that particular levy are our investments that create mental health clinics at every um, school within the Seattle public school system. Uh, I think that that is a critical way for us to meet those mental health needs of, um, of children within our public school system and um, look forward to continuing to support that level of investment, um, particularly if given an opportunity to reshape the renewal of that levy and making sure that we're continuing to expand those direct services and meeting children where they're at um, to provide those services. Great, thank you. Any other follow-up questions? Andy, go ahead. Um, how do you plan on involving residents in the decision-making process in Seattle? Well, I think depending on um, what community you come from, you probably already have an outsized voice in, uh, in uh, making your positions known on particular issues. And so, um, uh, the, some folks might not know, but I'm, the, I'm on the board of this organization called Local Progress, and we really do believe in co-governance. And, and, and that to me means making sure that we are doing community engagement in a way that doesn't lift up the frequent flyers, but that instead really deeply um, engages communities who have not historically had access to um, their elected officials and to power. Um, and, and so for me, that means, uh, you know, working closely with neighbor, like the Department of Neighborhoods, for example, and making sure that they're fully resourced on particularly some of the linguistically and culturally appropriate um, community engagement specialists that they have within that Hi. department. Thank you. Uh, Mackenzie. Yeah, thank you. So I'm pretty involved with the local music industry. 
And as you remember last year, we were pretty much the first ones that had to shut down and we were the last ones that got to go back to work when, when involved with the pandemic. Unfortunately, we're already starting to lose gigs this year and we're kind of expecting the same thing that things are going to stop. So my question is, uh, do you have thoughts of um, different ways to um, hone in on supporting these type of workers that literally might not be allowed to go to work and do their jobs? And maybe some examples like a temporary UBI plan. I know we talked about the eviction moratorium earlier because I, you know, we don't really know what the state, how they're going to react with unemployment and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, obviously strategy number one is get as vaccinate, vaccinate, vaccinate. We need to get as many people as possible vaccinated in our um, community to really get uh, a handle, particularly on the Delta variant. Um, but to, to be more specific about your, you know, sort of local strategies, you know, I was, I was, um, I was one of the two primary sponsors of legislation related to the Seattle Rescue Plan that made a specific earmarked um, investment in the arts, film, and music industry, including uh, workers within that industry. And I agree with you that I think that ultimately what we are going to um, need is uh, a universal basic income program. We're seeing this being piloted in other cities, including San Francisco. There was just an article published today talking about how successful universal basic income programs are. And I, as mayor, am interested in uh, exploring how we can uh, pull that together for our own city. Thank you. Any further questions? I have uh, another one. I'm trying to pull it up, sorry. Um, so uh, one of our members uh, was curious um, uh, on how we plan to either replace or repair the Ballard or Magnolia bridges, um, especially since there are critical uh, maritime freight corridors. Um, are you able to talk a little bit about that? Uh, yes, I will try to address this in a minute or less. So we have about $100 million worth of uh, bridge maintenance and repair that needs to happen uh, throughout the city. Um, you've identified two of those bridges that are in need. And listen, I live in West Seattle, so I understand what's at stake here. When our bridge and our infrastructure goes down, it impacts multimodal users um, and, uh, and our freight and our commerce and our mobility, not just for us, but the entire region. So I think this is an area where um, I could leverage my relationships with folks like Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal, who've been, who've been uh, you know, championing these investments at the federal level. Um, she's a supporter in my campaign and also other state elected officials to continue to identify uh, limited resources to be able to, to start pulling together the funding needed to address these maintenance costs before we have infrastructure failure. So um, that's that's how I would uh, approach that issue and, and certainly appreciate personally what's at stake. Great, thank you. Uh, we have time for one more if anybody has a burning question. Uh, Sherry, go ahead. Hi, um, I uh, uh, have read that the um, the developers, you know, they're supposed to build affordable housing or pay a fee, and they seem to prefer to pay the fee. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> so um, I, what I'm concerned is that, um, that a lot of the affordable housing is going to be built just in one or two areas of the city and not spread out throughout the city. And I was wondering if you have a, uh, something that can address that and keep our city from becoming or be or, staying segregated? Yeah, I really appreciate this question. You know, um, uh, you're talking about the mandatory housing affordability program. I do think there's an opportunity uh, and I would be interested in the, as the next mayor to really look at whether we have set the dial in the right places to incentivize performance, um, i.e. building of affordable housing um, integrated into those market rate buildings. Um, but ultimately, I do think that social housing is the answer for us on this issue to take, um, you know, housing that needs to be affordable for a long period of time out of the hands of developers is, um, is I think, a critically important long-term strategy. 
But I also want to um, acknowledge that we currently live in a city where it's illegal to build apartments, condos, and duplexes across the city. And that makes our city exclusive to the rich and wealthy who can afford a single family home that uh, average, averages the price of $850,000 in our city. So we have to tackle those exclusionary zoning laws and allow people to live in residential neighborhoods. Uh, and, and I think that that is gonna be the next challenge um, for, for the next mayor. Okay. Thank you so much. And with that, uh, we are close to time. So would you like to go ahead with your one minute uh, wrap up? Yeah, I was pushing the envelope there with uh, with Paula um, towards the end. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, thank you um, all for having me um, this evening. I am uh, really um, inspired by um, our, our uh, election results on primary election night. I am hopeful that we are on the cusp of really taking big, bold action and doing that together. I am uh, again uh, asking for the support of the 36th uh, Legislative District Democrats. As a lifelong Democrat, I know what's at stake in this race. And really what we need is to say no to the stronghold of corporate interest and power at City Hall and begin saying yes to centering working families and our interest in all of our policy making to make sure that this city is one that is moving towards just uh, justice, towards equity, towards fairness, and towards creating that vibrant, safe uh, city of complete neighborhoods that really does allow us to not just have a city in which our low wage workers are allowed to work, but not to live, thrive, and raise a family. So my vision is one of a 15 minute city, uh, one that is fulfilling our obligations to leave this planet in a better condition than we have uh, uh, now for the future generation. And I look forward to working with you all on that vision. Great, thank you so much.